How did we get here? That's my main uh, question. And we're not in a good place. That's uh, pretty obvious. But in my way of thinking, these three states are quite important because the Republicans won these three states by a uh, minute margin. And uh, the fact of the matter is, if that only 40,000 people have changed their votes, the vote would have gone the other way. Okay, so this is known, but it's, this is not well known, but it's crucial because these states voted Democratic since 1988. Okay, so the fact that they're flipped is a big, big thing. And they all voted for Obama. So you, it's difficult to ascribe their change to racism or some other factor. Um, Trump didn't win by much. 30% of the eligible voters, by the way, if you count it that way. It's very far from uh, Rousseau's general will, but that's our system. Okay, so my talk is basically divided into uh, four or five parts. I argue that the economy is not in good shape. You hear all sorts of things. We have a strong economy and all other things, but I'm going to show you that it's really not in good shape. Uh, where did it start? Well, history doesn't have a beginning, but I'm going to start with Reaganomics because it was rather uh, important. A, a big change from the FDR policies, which more or less uh, lingered on into the 70s. And uh, then hyperglobalization clobbered a lot of people. And financial crisis was basically wasted because it would have been an opportunity, like in 1933, to get on a different path. Okay? My thinking is very path dependent, namely that you get on a path and the logic of the momentum takes you in a particular direction. Um, suicides are up, as you know, opioid epidemics are up, alcoholism is up. All this leads to difficulties in, um, in the society. In addition, there are a lot of other signs which, which point in similar direction. Namely, we have mass murders. You know, it used to be the case that when you killed somebody, there was a reason for it. Okay, maybe vengeance or maybe a love affair or something like that, but that is no longer the case. Okay, uh, we're killing people we don't really know. And to me, that's part of the despair because how do you attack the system in today's world? Well, it's not all that easy. easy. Uh, you know, it's much easier to go up in a hotel room in Las Vegas and start shooting. Demographics is important. And of course, income is so also. And here you have real, real median household income. Uh, this is 2017, and you see that the increase since 1998 has been about $1,300, which is about $72 per year. Nothing to really brag about, okay? This is not a strong economy, in other words. Here's Ohio. It's down. It hasn't even reached the 1998 peak. Okay, they don't tell you these numbers. You don't, you don't hear these numbers too frequently. Uh, Wisconsin, down. Michigan, really down. Okay, so maybe we shouldn't be so surprised that these states uh, went for Donald Trump. The system didn't treat him well. And of course, there came the financial crisis. A lot of people evicted. You think that's fair? 
while the millionaires are getting their share of uh, federal support? Uh, I don't think so. So injustice also is a motivating factor. And of course, you have stagnant wages at the bottom uh, while the rich become super rich. That's not a recipe for a good political system. We have basically 18 structural problems, uh, like the budget deficit, large private debt, foreign trade imbalance, endemic unemployment, obscene level of inequality, of, excuse me, political gridlock, costly military, military engagements around the globe. We can't get out of those either. Stagnating income, stagnating wages, you know, it's not going to, that's not going to change anytime soon. We're in a new historical epoch, which is very hard to recognize for people, very hard to acknowledge and contemplate that we're, you know, it's a turning point. We, got, we need to, new thinking, new ways of thinking about all this. Um, we have we morphed into an era of slow growth that will continue. Economic theory is inadequate for the task because economic theory is not interdisciplinary. It doesn't consider the social and political issues at hand. And we have uh, an unbalanced economy. The financial sector is like a cocoon. It's making money like crazy, but it's decoupled from the real economy. It's not really helping uh, people on mainstream. And of course, GMP is decoupled from employment and will become more so in the near future. And we have skill mismatch. And here's where education is really uh, problematic because it's very costly, as we all know, inadequate uh, for the tasks at hand. Uh, too many mediocre schools around and no real plan even to think about fixing it. Uh, productivity slowed down, innovation has run out of steam, uh, inefficient healthcare system which takes a lot of, uh, a lot of our uh, funds. Uh, so do not blame the, the deplorables for heaven's sake, they're the victims, okay? As far as I'm concerned, at least, uh, it's not their fault that they were excluded. It's not, they did not create the system, okay? And they do not understand the system. And they are being manipulated in a big way. So my argument is that it is the economic policies that led to the revolt of the deplorables and to the vengeance on us. We have 18 problems, or you can't even start on any of them, because we just had a tax cut that takes away a lot of the money that could have been used for education, for example, if we had recognized that education was a big problem. We went into hyper-globalization without really thinking through the consequences, and we should have done that. Right. But once we are here, you know, it's you can't go back, you right. can't recreate those factories, and uh, you know that's a pipe dream to bring those jobs yeah. back. So I have sympathy for the idea that we got a problem. Right. But uh, uh, levying tariffs are not going to help us. We should have helped those people who were displaced and clobbered in the 1980s and 1990s. Yeah. Or we could have slowed down the rate of, of uh, globalization. That's